Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another fascinating episode of our YouTube channel. Today we embark on an exciting journey back in time to explore the enigmatic history of Stonehenge. So grab your imaginary time machines and let's dive right in. Stonehenge, a UNESCO World Heritage Site located in Whitshire, England, has captivated the human imagination for centuries. This ancient stone monument, one of the most iconic and mysterious structures on Earth, continues to puzzle historians, archaeologists and visitors alike. Dating back to around 2500 BCE, Stonehenge is believed to have been constructed in multiple phases over a span of 1500 years. The monument compromises various components including massive standing stones, lintels and earthworks almost forming a circular shape. One of the most intriguing aspects of Stonehenge is the origin of its massive stones, weighing up to 25 tons. The stones, known as sarsens, were transported from a location approximately 25 miles north of Stonehenge. The blue stones, smaller in size and thought to have originated over 100 miles away in present-day Wales, were also carefully transported to the site. The immense effort required to move and arrange these stones has left experts and visitors astounded throughout history. The purpose of Stonehenge remains a topic of passionate debate among experts. Various theories have emerged ranging from religious and astronomical functions to serving as a burial site or a gathering place for rituals and ceremonies. Some believe that Stonehenge was aligned with the solstices, acting as an ancient calendar to mark a significant celestial event. As remarkable as Stone Age is today, it's important to acknowledge that it once stood as a part of a much larger complex. Recent archaeological excavations have revealed evidence of surrounding burial mounds, dwellings and ceremonial pits, suggesting that Stonehenge was once a vibrant center of activity for the Neolithic and Bronze Age communities. Though we may never know the exact purpose of Stonehenge, its symbolic significance and extraordinary engineering achievements continue to inspire awe and curiosity. UNESCO recognized its cultural significance in 1986 and declared it a World Heritage Site, ensuring its preservation for generations to come. In the game, we get Stonehenge as a rare wonder, available through the Wonders of the Ancient World creation screen. In the game, Stonehenge offers us certain boosts, which we will discuss right now. So first of all, we start with the first boost the Stonehenge provides to us which is a production boost and this production boost is going to raise the gold acquirement in your capital city same like if you watched my video on the hanging gardens it's basically the same mirrored version of hanging gardens which increases your food production this one increases your gold production by starting 10 percent and if you go higher each level will add you some percentages on top ending up with 36.5 percent which is a quite a decent boost to the gold Therefore, this wonder is very, very useful because in all eras, you need gold more than food. You acquire gold more than food anyways, yes, but the boost it provides is usable throughout the whole game, especially because of its synergies and type, and we will talk about it a little bit later. The second bonus Stonehenge provides is it gives you research points daily. It has a production, has to be on for 24 hours, so it would produce you research points. Now, Stonehenge gives you one research point as the start on the level one, and each of the 10 levels, it will add one more. So on level 30, you will get four research points daily for having maxed Stonehenge, which is also very, very useful. The last bonus that Stonehenge has, it has a temple synergy. It produces one research point extra per every other active temple in your wonders. Now, this synergy is actually good. It's a temple synergy. You might say we don't use temples as much. Yes, we don't, but usually how it's done, you go to the active screen and before you collect your research points from Stonehenge daily, because this extra bonus from active temples in your wonders is coming up together with the production. So all we need to do is before we click on the Stonehenge to collect research points, we need to switch all of possible temples active. So any temples you have, you just put them on and then you click on the Stonehenge to collect it. That's how daily you can acquire approximately seven research points as a bonus from the temple synergy of Stonehenge. And then we switch all those temples off because we don't need them, put 
that we like. Just leave Stonehenge on so its production continues and then the next day we do the same thing. We just put on the temples just before we click on the Stonehenge to collect and then we switch them off when we don't need them later on. Now about the synergy, Stonehenge is a statue and a temple, which makes him absolutely amazing and usable throughout the gameplay, end game, early game, no meta. Stonehenge will be usable throughout the game, I never switch it off, it's on in my city in the age of Sicily every day, it's never going off. So Stonehenge, because of its type, is very very useful. As a statue, it boosts all your military wonders, it increases the damage of Zeus, Artemis, Sphinx and etc. So Stonehenge as a statue produces you a lot of damage because statue synergy is usable by the top military wonders. Unlike Hanging Gardens, Stonehenge can be used all throughout the game to boost your military wonders and to produce you decent amount of research point and to highly increase your gold production. And my Stonehenge as you see is at level 12, I leveled it up a long time ago, I don't level it anymore because for me it's enough of what I have, I don't need it higher, if I would ever need it I would definitely upgrade this one, but at the moment I don't think it's needed, I use it at level 12 and I'm really happy that I leveled it up before, so now it's very very usable for me and just because we usually never switch it off it makes sense to level it up because you will get more gold just for having it and you will have it anyways so why not level it up secondary stonehenge is a temple as a temple it doesn't count itself for its temple synergy but it can produce certain synergies bonuses to other wonders for example if you're early game and you play egypt ally culture and you use chaos pyramid maybe to boost them then stonehenge will act as a synergy for Chaos Pyramid and Chaos Pyramid will get 60 of each previous era goods more just because you have Stonehenge on if you use of course Chaos Pyramid. Now secondary Stonehenge can boost Tomb of Masolos. Now if you watched my video you know that we don't put Tomb of Masolos on for 24 hours because of its production. We only use it daily before we do any quests and then we do five quests and we switch it off so but if you use it if you have no other wonders to put then Tomb of Masolos will get 100 current era primary goods more just for having Stonehenge active. Next is of course a production wonder, temples are usually used for production wonders, I mean temple synergy. So if you are in China, you play early Rome and the Roman Empire and you have China allied culture, maybe you are using Forbidden City to boost China production, then the Forbidden City will have 60 of each current era goods more will give you just because Stonehenge is active they synergize together and that's basically it Stonehenge is very very useful it's a statue it boosts military wonders it gives you decent gold increase decent gold production increase gives you decent amount of research points daily and also can boost some other production wonders depending on where you are in the game and what wonders you're using the next wonder we're gonna be talking about today would be Cheops Pyramid. The Great Pyramid of Cheops, also known as the Pyramid of Khufu, stands tall on the Giza Plateau just outside of Cairo, Egypt, built around 4,500 years ago during the Old Kingdom's Fourth Dynasty. This architectural wonder is a testament to the skill, ingenuity and meticulous planning of the ancient Egyptians. The scale of the Great Pyramid is truly awe-inspiring. It was the tallest man-made structure in the world for over 3,800 years, towering at approximately 480 feet. 146 meters. Compromised of an estimated 2.3 million limestone blocks, some weighing up to 80 tons, the level of precision and craftsmanship involved in its construction is truly mind-boggling. The purpose of the Great Pyramid has been a subject of intense speculation and fascination. Many believe it was built as a tomb for Fire and Khufu, who ruled during the Fourth Dynasty, and its magnificent size serves as a symbol of his power and legacy. The interior of the pyramid consists of elaborate passageways and chambers including the king's chamber and the queen's chamber, adding further intrigue to its purpose. The construction techniques utilized by the ancient Egyptians reveal their advanced knowledge in engineering and mathematics. The precise alignment of the pyramid sides with the cardinal's direction showcases the remarkable understanding of celestial navigation. 
It is often suggested that the pyramids were built in alignment with specific astronomical phenomena, such as the solstices of or the positions of stars. The construction of the Great Pyramid remains a source of wonder and mystery. How did the ancient Egyptians transport and lift these colossal stones with such precision? Were advanced tools or techniques involved? These questions continue to fuel debates among historians and scientists despite numerous theories, many aspects of the pyramid's construction remain shrouded in mystery. Throughout history, the Great Pyramid has stood as a symbol of ancient Egypt's architectural grandeur and endurance. Its significance has transcended time, captivating the imagination of explorers, historians and tourists from around the world. UNESCO recognized its immense cultural significance in 1979 and declared it a World Heritage Site, a testament to its lasting impact on human history. And in the game, we get Kiev's Pyramid, also as the rare wonder, available through the Wonders of the Ancient World construction screen. Now, about the Kiev's Pyramid in the game, let's start with the first boost it provides. Kiev's Pyramid, like all of the production wonders that are specific for their allied culture, is specifically Egypt allied culture wonder. Now, Kiev's Pyramid, as the first bonus, it boosts the output of all goods production in Egypt by starting 10%. Of course, if you level this wonder higher, this number will also go higher and it would reach 86.5% of boost. Now, since this is a specific Egypt allied culture wonder, we would never use it after and before Egypt. Therefore, it's kind of pointless to invest resources in it, but it's very, very usable even on the level 4 on the first levels. If you invest a little bit in it, even if you don't on level 1, still, if you get it early game, it's 10% boost to Egyptian production and it's actually very, very decent. You will need a lot of Egyptian goods to progress through these two eras, therefore, boost from Chaos Pyramid is always welcome. Now, Egypt is the easiest allied culture to do, but still, if you can get this boost, you will advance much faster because if you will collect goods much faster and the gameplay will be more smooth and enjoyable. I do not suggest investing in it, but if you get it, just use it during the Egypt allied culture time. As the second bonus, Kev's Pyramid produces 100 of each previous era goods in one day. So basically, it needs 24 hours to produce you 100 of each previous era goods. This bonus is usable only early game. Of course, if you level this one higher, the goods amount will increase from 100 till 390. But in Minoan era or classic Greece, you will never reach it to level 30. And even if you will, the amount of resources which you would need to upgrade it is actually kind of huge. So my suggestion would be investing in some other wonders. But having these hundred of each previous era goods daily, if you don't have any other better wonders to put on early game, this is actually very, very helpful because early game, you need all the resources and all the help you can get. And having these hundred of each previous era goods in your capital city is actually quite decent because we have very low amount of workers we can't produce everything at the same time and just to have this small bonus just to ease the game for us a little bit is actually quite decent as the third bonus camp pyramid produces 60 of each previous era good extra per every other active temple now this is what i was talking about when i started with stonehenge if you use other temples especially early game when you don't have other wonders and you might have some temples in the city active all the time this can be very very useful because on top of that hundred which you get from the middle bonus of Cape's pyramid you can actually get something extra for your capital city and it is always always useful for the late game Cape's pyramid just like forbidden city or Cal, they are not usable after their allied culture when egypt allied culture ends you would never use Cape's pyramid anymore you will put something else there, maybe even Forbidden City to boost China production, and that's it. Therefore, this wonder is only usable during its allied culture or early, early, early game, because in that type of period, you need all the help you can get and you will not have all the wonders unlocked. So until that time, Chaos Pyramid is easy to unlock and you can actually use it for the time. 
So my suggestion is not to invest in it, but if you get it, use it because it will be very, very helpful for you during the Egypt Allied culture. Personally, on my free-to-play account, I get it randomly and I actually use it and enjoy because I have more goods produced in the Egypt Allied culture and it helps a lot to accumulate them faster. About the synergies of Cheops Pyramid. Now, Cheops Pyramid is a temple, therefore, it boosts all the wonders that require temple synergy, just like Stonehenge we just talked about in this video. So, Cheops Pyramid can boost Stonehenge to produce more research points, can boost Tomb of Masolus to get more of current era primary goods, can also boost Forbidden City, which will also produce more of current era goods for you. If if you have it on. And that's it because it doesn't count itself. Conclusion. Today we talked about two world wonders which we have available in the wonders of the ancient world. First of which was Stonehenge, which is absolutely amazing, usable early game, late game, anytime. Stonehenge is a must have and we never switch it off, we always have it on. So Stonehenge is worth investing and worth investing a lot because you will get a lot more gold production if you use it and therefore this will make your gameplay more easy and more smooth. And also it's a statue wonder which will boost your military military wonders. Therefore, you will get more damage from all of your troops just by having Stonehenge active. Second wonder we talked about today is the Chaos Pyramid. Now, Chaos Pyramid is a bit another story. We use it only throughout the Egypt Allied culture and preferably not invest in it because it is usable only throughout Egypt. It helps a lot, but after Egypt, we don't need that anymore because it's not usable afterwards. And on this note, I thank you all for watching. If you like my content, hit a like, subscribe for more and I'll see you on my next video.